together once again in the great name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I'm glad for revelation that comes through the spirit if God does not reveal any of the truth to us we'll never know it amen fact is 1 Corinthians 2 14 he said now the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for the foolishness unto him neither can he know them for they are spiritually discerned in the book of Matthew 16, 13 through 18, uh, the Bible said when, he, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do they say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say, well, some say you're John the Baptist and, and uh, Jeremiah, uh, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But he asked the age-old question, but who say ye that I am? In a blinding flash, Brother Peter got a revelation from the throne. He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And what did Jesus tell him? Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee. Man's universities and seminaries and cemeteries and everything else that God hadn't revealed it unto you, but who, who? My Father which art in heaven. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27, all things deliver me my Father. Neither knoweth any, any, uh, any one, not going to know what he's saying, and neither knoweth the Son but the Father, neither, neither knoweth the Father save the Son, and to he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. When Jesus was praying in Luke 10, 21, he said, O Lord God of heaven and earth, I thank thee that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them unto babes. Think about what he said. Hid them from the wise and the prudent and revealed them unto babes. If there were more than one in the Godhead, I'd certainly be confused. I'd have, a, I'd have a million questions to ask. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Number one, how many fathers do we have or who is the father? Matthew 1 20 Luke 1 35 said the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and she conceived. I think that would make the Holy Ghost the father. The third member of their Holy Trinity not the first or second. So we find the Bible said the spirit was the father and in 1 Corinthians 8 verse 6 the apostles said the disciples said but unto us there is one God the father. So they said God was the Father. And 1 John 2, 1 said, I write these things, little children, to sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. <laughs> there we have scripture saying the Holy Ghost is the Father, God's the Father, and Jesus Christ the Father. Do we have three fathers? No. Malachi 2, 10 said, have not we all one Father? Had not one God created us? Amen. 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 I don't get confused when I read these scriptures. You, you could ask a... You could ask a, a Hundreds of things on this. Let me give you a couple more. Question is, which one raised Jesus from the dead? Galatians 1.1 1, 1 said, God the Father raised him from the dead. Romans 8.11 said, the Spirit raised him from the dead. In John 2.19, Jesus Christ himself said, destroy this temple. And in three days, what? I will raise it, I will raise it up. Amen. <laughs> so which one raised him from the dead? If there are more than one in the Godhead, I'm saying. 
Well, we know there's only one God, don't we? Right. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 19, to wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto not themselves, plural, unto himself, singular. Hallelujah. So the great God of glory did not, did not, he did not realize that uh, mankind probably would, would, would get as far off course as they got when the old world was destroyed, son of the world was destroyed, although God knows all things. But he long suffered a lot of that. In other words, he allowed it to go on for a good while. I don't know when it first started getting bad in the old world in the book of Genesis. Uh, I guess you could run the genealogies on it and maybe run a time span. But uh, there come a time when God said it's over. And when I look at America alone, I would thank God if I was God, I would destroy it a long time ago. <laughs> when you see the sin and how far it's gone just in the last two or three or four decades. The last decade alone. Amen. So I'm glad to know who Jesus is tonight. Amen. But the scripture that everybody uses for a plan of salvation, which is not, but it's a true scripture, it's a book. For John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Those who are believed in him should not perish, have everlasting or eternal life. Now let's look at it the two God or three God way. Here's God the Father and God the Son setting up there according to their doctrine. And God the Father says to the Son, Son, I love the world. I really love those people. Let me tell you something. I'm not going down there and suffer. You are. I'm not going down and bleed. You are. You're going to take the rap. Well, I'll tell you the answer to John 3, 16. It's Ephesians 5, 25. It said, Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. Jesus said, No man takes his life from me. Amen. I have, the, I have the power to lay, lay it down. I have the power to raise it again. In the, in the Christian school at home, back while Brother Reed still pastor, been a couple years ago or so, they asked me when I was home that week if I would teach the Godhead to the Christian school, uh, the, more, the upper grades, not the little kindergarten or first graders, but the, uh, the high school, I guess you would call it, in the Christian school. And I said, sure. But we had two young uh, people there. One was a girl and one was a, uh, a boy. And their father pastored a Church of God church, which is Trinity. And, but they came to the Christian school because they liked the Christian school, liked the wholeness, liked the Christian teaching, all that. Well, when I began teaching through those three, three messages of the Godhead, the Lord kept bringing me back to one point. And that is, in Jesus Christ, deity and humanity was not confused, it was fused. In some of the scriptures, he spoke as Almighty God. Your sins be forgiven you. There is no man can forgive sin. And if God was not in him, and he wasn't God manifest in that flesh, he sure was a blasphemer, wasn't he? No man can forgive sin. Yet he told people, thy sins be forgiven thee. But he spoke in deity as Almighty God. As human, as sonship, he grew tired. He grew weary. He got hungry. But as Almighty God, he stepped up to that tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth! Praise, Praise, God. Praise God. And you know what? When all that was over, God kept bringing me back to that. In him, in him, uh, the Godhead was not confused. In him, deity and humanity was fused. And uh, the sister that was teaching the, uh, the Christian school there asked uh, that the young lady uh, at the ending of the, those services said, uh, did Brother Lance uh, confuse you or do you understand what he's saying? She said, I see it. I see it. I see the Godhead. 